here's one of the simplest, smartest things you can do to slash your lighting bill. These. And turn off unnecessary lights. <laughs> you didn't just do that. Oh, nah. It's the magic of special effects. <sighs> oh, I can see the Oscar on the mantelpiece now. Lit by a compact fluorescent reflector. <laughs> <laughs> nice segue. But Mark is right. Always turn off lights when you leave a room and don't burn lights you don't need. What's super smart is switching to compact fluorescent bulbs, CFLs, instead of standard incandescent bulbs. CFLs were rare once, but you can get them anywhere now and at good prices. The energy savings are huge. If every home in America switched out just one regular bulb with an Energy Star CFL, we would save enough energy to light three million homes for a year. The figure is huge because CFLs are so efficient. They use 75% less energy than incandescent bulbs, last 10 times longer, can save $30 over the bulb's lifetime, and they're 75% cooler, a very good thing. And as you can see, the latest CFLs give you every size and shape, regular and small spirals, reflectors for recessed lighting, smooth covered bulbs. You can get CFLs for dimmers and three level lamps and the package clearly says how bright the light is, like equivalent to a regular 60 watt bulb and the light color from warm to white. Now, where do you put them? Everywhere. At least start with the highest use lights, kitchen ceiling, living or TV room, outdoor post light, you know where you use them most. Try to switch out four bulbs with CFLs and way down the road when you need to replace your CFLs, be sure to check out energystar.gov for information on recycling and disposal. And now for... You have them in your house. They glow in the dark, red, green. Blue. Sometimes they pulse. Sometimes they carry messages like Channel 13. Energy warriors know them by many names. Vampire power, ghost energy, phantom energy loss. By any spooky name, <clears throat> by any spooky name, they are power that's consumed even when a device or appliance is turned off but still plugged in. Technically, it's standby power. Anything with a remote uses standby power. But you can defeat vampire power. Take that. Ah, power strips. <laughs> We're a fun couple. <laughs> Seriously, the energy used for standby power is no joke. It's sucking away 5% of the nation's home energy use. Remotes are only a part of it. Any appliance with a clock draws energy. So do plugged in printers, modems, fax machines, and anything with a power pack plug. Battery and phone chargers left in the socket pull energy even when charging nothing. The power down or sleep feature of a computer is one way to save energy, and that doesn't mean a screensaver. Screensavers often use more energy than sleep mode. If you know you'll be away from your computer for two hours, turn it off. Leaving computers on 24-7 is a big waste of energy and money. That's where a power strip or surge suppressor comes in. Plug everything into it printer, modem, router. Flipping one switch unplugs everything. Unplugged, now that's the energy warrior way. The same goes for your entertainment electronics. Put them on a strip and turn it off when you're not watching, listening, or recording. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is it worth it? Well, here's the price of ghost energy. Americans pay more to power turned off DVD players than to power DVDs in use. In fact, U.S. households spend about $100 per year to power devices in standby power mode. Definitely a turn off, which is what you should do. Also, when you're shopping for replacements, look for Energy Star qualified products. They use much less standby power. Still, with all the high-tech bells and whistles. Right, and overall, office equipment not rated Energy Star uses twice as much energy. Now, I must say though, remotes have their place. Uh, yeah, I found that one in your shoe. <laughs>